up guys welcome to av atmos um if you like audio video technology and you want to keep up with all the latest cinema uh, technology be sure to subscribe to our channel right now hit the bell icon so you will be notified when our next content has been released today i'm just gonna give uh, the new people to home cinema five reasons why they should still keep buying av receivers as opposed to going or a step higher to get AV processors. Now, number one is the price. Uh, I'm going to keep this as short as possible, but I, I will still give you guys all you need to know. And number one is the prices of AV receivers, that's quality AV receivers as opposed to um, processors. Now, when you are going out to shop for some AV receivers, you need to take into consideration the price. What are you looking to spend? Now, most AV receivers will allow you to do a lot, if not 80 to 90% of what a processor can do. And what does that mean? It can process your audio, it can process your video, it can send your audio uh, sorry it can send your video signal to your, the display or your projector and as well as uh, be in the position to play that content through your speakers without the need of a separate amplification now um, performance wise it may not be as powerful as when you are on separate systems that decode your audio sensor to a power amplifier uh, the power amplifier now sends signal to your speakers and um, um, the video is processed to your television as well um, but that notwithstanding uh, in the region of price and every receiver still outperforms any processor any day any time because a, uh, most of the time you still get that 80 to 90 percent performance that you get out of processors and for the price you are trying to save i think it makes a lot more sense to stick with AV receivers till further notice number two is longevity um i have heard so many times that at times some AV receivers tend to fail after their first to second year I start giving you issues like failed boards, failed HDMI ports, um, a lot of uh, problems. Um, it's really, really, I think, subjective because it happens to maybe a few people. I've seen some people that their AV receivers tend to stay at least three, four, five years before they think of upgrading. Some even stay a lot longer than that. I think it's a subjective thing because you cannot because your AV receiver uh, went bad and you kind of like tag um, the whole AV uh, world is not as um, um, good as the processors. Now, don't get me wrong, the processors are built to last longer. <laughs> Because every processors, unlike every receivers, are not manufactured every year. They don't bring out new models every year. Uh, like take for instance the Anthem, um, Anthem's um, AVM60 was launched about six years ago. Um, sorry, three years ago in 2016. Till now, so it's about three years old, and it's still going strong. I don't think Anthem is even thinking of bringing on any new AV processor anytime. Maybe if they want to bring out now, they will be talking of a 13 channel AV processor. So, to a degree, longevity is on the side of processors. They tend to a bit last longer than um, an average AV receiver because of uh, the build quality in general. Um, but that's not to say that AV receivers don't perform very well in that longevity department, especially if you buy a quality AV receiver from a good manufacturer like Marantz, Denon, especially Yamaha, uh, and even Anthem as well. Uh, these guys will tend to give you something that will take you for a couple of years before you, look, you think of upgrading. Number three is size. Um, the size, space taken, and weight. 
um what i mean by size is how big is this ab receiver as compared to ab processors and how what is the space the ab processor the power amps and the weight of all these things individually uh, most of the times when by the time you pair your processor with your power amplifiers you find out that it's taking a lot of space on your rack and you you, you get to realize that you're even building a separate rack for your system because uh, you have let us take for instance three power amplifiers that are running all your uh, speakers um your your ground speakers your height speakers and everything and it becomes a bit difficult for um you to um, manage some things properly because um, one power amplifier can fail um you probably become stranded to a degree because when one power amplifier in your system fails you won't continue watching that movie till you probably fix that power amplifier or change it out entirely so the size space taken and weight matters a lot and ab receiver still has that uh over any ab processor any day any time number four is real world performance now what i mean by real world performance i'm not saying that the any ab receiver would out outperform any ab processor and power amplifier uh any day anytime no i'm not saying that what i mean by real world performance is that in your home most times most av receivers have been designed well enough to power your speakers to reference listening level that you do not need a power amplifier to make it too loud now what i mean by that is that the fact that there are some higher end av receivers that are so um powerful that um they sound as if you are using a power amplifier and what i mean again by reward performance is that when you have such AV receivers that can perform at that power, you do not need to go a to, to to an AV processor and power amplifier because you will still get that same power that um, you probably would thought you couldn't get um, from an AV receiver, especially from the higher end AV receiver. Because listen to these guys, what you would spend on a higher end AV receiver would be the sound will be comparable to separate the only thing the separates will have over um your standard um av receiver is the dynamics and let's say the punch uh, at high volumes and most of the times in most homes most people will never play um their system above 80 decibels most of the time um, let's say max they could do um, 90 decibels but I'm not sure any sane human being will be doing a hundred decibels just to watch a movie in his own house um, so you don't need a power amplifier that can do a hundred decibels easily what you need is um, an AV receiver that can actually play up to 80 decibel without distortion and still be very very clear for whatever you want it to do in general and uh, finally is best better value number five is better value uh, honestly i cannot see a reason why one should skip a higher end av receiver just to go spend twice or three times that same amount to get av processor for less value because honestly the more you spend money the lesser value you get uh, you need to compare your value for a dollar how much am i getting for a dollar i spend on a, a processor or an av receiver if the value is lower than what you're spending on i don't think it's worth it most of times i feel i see it that it's not worth it because i imagine um i don't really want to call brands uh but you spend 10 grand on amps uh, and processors whereas a, a basic uh, 11 channel higher end um, av receiver costs around two thousand us dollars or a little bit more 
Um, if you want to step to the attaching channel, which the Dunham has, it's about four thousand US dollars, and it makes a lot more sense because these systems can perform so well that you don't need separate amplification to get any sort of um, volume out of your speakers, except your room or the theater is so large that you need um, a power amplifier to make your speakers so loud to cover a, a certain large area um, of uh, space. So at, on a normal scale of 1 to 10, in most homes, AV receivers are still the best value any day, any time over any uh, processor that you think you can buy. So guys, this is basically it uh, for this content. Um, I hope you liked it and subscribe uh, to our channel if you did. I keep watching guys. Once again, my name is Immaculate and I'll catch you guys on AV Atmos next time.